let's calculate the location of Lagrange points L1 and L2. I'm not going to do 3, 4, or 5, uh, but let's just, I'm going to show you where these are. I'm going to talk about L1 and L2, and then we'll calculate. So L1 is, this is the sun, and this is the earth. And Lagrange points are locations in orbit at which you can place an object and it will stay in the same position relative to the Earth. So if you put a spacecraft in Lagrange point L1 as the Earth orbits around the Sun, uh, that spacecraft will stay in the same position relative to the Earth. So it have the same angular velocity as the Earth as it orbits the, the Sun. And same for two. Three is on the other side of the Sun. Uh, four and five are in the same position mostly in the same path as the sun, but before and, and behind it. Uh, so we're just going to look at one and two. So the key here is uh, same angular velocity. Same angular velocity, same omega. So let's first find the angular velocity of the Earth. So here I have the sun and the Earth, not to scale people. And this we'll call RSE for sun to Earth orbital distance. At this point, there's a gravitational force, Fg, pulling on the Earth, and it has to move in a circle. So at that, since there's only one force, that has to be equal to the mass and acceleration. So I can write uh, Fg equals m omega e squared rse. So that's the, um, actually, I should just, I could just call that r, and then I'll talk about h's and stuff like that. That's what I'll do. That's that's what yeah that's what I did before, but that's the angular velocity of the Earth omega, and that's the gravitational force, which would be equal to the gravitational constant g, mass of the sun, mass of the Earth over R, S E for now squared. But I'm going to change that to S, and I want to solve for omega. So let's put in uh, the mass. That's the mass of the Earth. Cancels uh, this, uh, makes that R cubed, and I get omega Earth equals the square root of g mass of the sun over r cubed, where r is the distance from the Earth to the sun. So that's important because when I put a spacecraft at L1, I want it to have that same angular velocity. Of course, if I move, if I put a spacecraft at some location, let's call this now, here's the sun, here's the Earth, that's r, and I want to put it right here, a distance uh, h1, closer. So if, if you just calculated the angular velocity of a spacecraft at that place with just the sun acting on it, then it would be the same thing. Omega 1 natural, I'll call it natural n, is going to be equal to the square root of g m s over r minus h cubed, right? Because now it's closer to the sun. So its gravitational force is going to be greater and its angular uh, this acceleration is going to be omega squared r is going to be smaller. Well, so the point is it has a has a lower angular velocity, has a higher angular velocity in order to stay in orbit. But if, if that was the case, it wouldn't stay along with the Earth. But fortunately, there are two forces acting on the spacecraft at that point. There's the F sun and then there's the F Earth. And the net of those two forces, we want to put this location at the location H from the Earth such that these two forces make it have it this angular velocity. Okay, so let's set up the equation, uh, and I'm going to call this the X direction. So we're just doing this in the X direction and put down the forces. So first I have uh, the force from the Sun. So it's going to be in the, let's say, negative X direction. Negative g, mass of the sun, mass of the spacecraft, I'll just call m, over the distance between them, which is going to be equal to r minus h quantity squared. And then I have the gravitational force from the Earth, which is going to be plus g, mass of the Earth, mass, over h squared, right? Because it's only an h distance away. That's the sum of the forces, and that's going to be equal to the mass of the spacecraft times the angular velocity squared times the radius the actual radius of orbit. So the angular velocity is this. So if I square that, I get g mass of the sun over r cubed times h, because that's omega squared. No, this is h 
this is going to be r minus h. That's the actual distance. But that's the, the distance for the, this is the angular velocity of the Earth squared. Okay, now we want to solve this for h. And it turns out that it's not so simple. Okay, so that's a, that's a parenthesis and that's a nothing. Um, because it's, you have an h here and h squared, you have an h, h squared and an h term in the denominator. Um, you know, you could try to manipulate this and cancel some stuff, and there are some ways you can do this. You can do this in the limit of ms much greater than me. There is a solution, but I'm not going to do that because I want to do it for like binary stars and everything. I want to find the solution. Um, so I'm going to do this numerically. So what I'm going to do is calculate, I'm going to pick a value for h, and I'm going to calculate this side, and then I'm going to calculate this side. And if they're not the same, I'll change h and do it again. So I'm going to calculate two functions. Actually, I'm going to plot these two functions. And where they intersect, plot these functions as a function of h. Where they intersect is the correct value. Oh, that's cheating, right? No, it's not cheating. It works. It works, right? OK. So this is L1. Let's do the same thing for L2. Because at L2, the only difference is that we're over here. So the distance is going to be r plus h. This is h1, technically. Uh, and the forces are going to both be in the same direction. So let's write down that equation uh, for L2. So here's L2. I have, um, let me draw a picture. There's the sun, there's the earth, and there's h, r. And they're going to move in the same angular velocity. And then we'll switch over to the computer to solve these. So the gravitational force, I'm just going to call this the positive x direction. Everything's in the, oh, this is negative. Because the acceleration is this way, the way I drew it. So that's in the same direction as that. That's negative. Okay. In this case, a little bit easier. They're all negative, essentially. So I'm going to say the gravitational force in the sun is g mass of the sun, mass of the spacecraft, over the distance between here and there, which is r plus h quantity squared, plus the gravitational force from the Earth, which is g mass of the Earth, mass over h squared, equals mass times omega squared. It has the same angular velocity of the Earth, which is g mass of the sun over r cubed, and that, this is m omega squared r, so I have to multiply that by the radius, which is r plus h. So that's my second equation. So we're going to do the first one, and then we'll do the second one. So we're going to solve this for h for the Earth system. And I think the answer is, uh, no, I know L2. We'll do L2 first, because I know h is, I think it's 1.5 times 10 to the ninth, I'm pretty sure. Okay, but let's just uh, switch over to Python and see if we can get this thing to work. And this is live, people. Okay, so I might be making a mistake here, but we'll make it together. Okay, so if I put in my values here for the G, the mass of the Earth, let me make that a little bigger. For G, the mass of the Earth, mass of the Sun, and the radius from the, the distance from the Sun to the Earth, I'm calling RSE, which I just called R before. I don't know why. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to make a graph. So let's make a graph. Uh, G1 equals a graph. I'm not going to give it a title. I'll give it x title uh, equals h in, in meters. I guess I should say that. And the y title is going to be stuff. Right, because I don't really know what I'm calculating. I'm counting the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now, here's one thing that I, let's just do it first and I'll change it. And then I'm going to say uh, FL is the left-hand side. It's G curve. Let's make that color equals color dot blue. And then FR equals G curve. Color equals color dot red. Okay. Now, I need to pick a value for H so I can calculate both sides, and then I'm going to need to pick a value of H, my dH. Um, I don't want to start H at 0 because then I'm going to get an infinite value because I'm dividing by H and some of those things. So let's pick, um, oof, I, I already know the answer is 10 to the ninth. So let's just pick, let's just make our, our lives easy. Let's say H equals 
um, five, 5 times 10 to the 8th. And dh is going to be equal to uh, 1 times 10 to the 8th. And we can change these layers, it's not a big deal. Okay. Now I'm going to say while h is less than, I'm going to increase h up to, let's say, 3 times 10 to the 9th, because I already know kind of where the answer is. 3e9, do the following. The first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the left-hand side. So I'll say uh, LHS, that's left-hand side of the equation. Now I just need to, I'm, I said I'm doing L2 first. So I'm just going to write in the left-hand side of the equation. It's G times mass of the sun times the mass, the mass cancels, right, on everything. I'll leave that out. Um, divided by uh, R, S, let's just call this, I'm going to call this R, just so I can write, make my equations a little bit look, the way I'm thinking about them. R plus H quantity squared, star star 2 is squared, plus G times mass of the earth divided by H squared, that's the left hand side. Now I need to calculate the right hand side. Right hand side is equal to G times mass of the sun times R plus H, all of that divided by R cubed. Now I'm going to plot both of those. So I'll say FL dot plot H, left hand side, FR dot plot H, right hand side. Now I'm going to increase my value of h, h equals h plus dh. I should save this. So let's say um, calculate L1 one and L2. Yeah, that's good. Lagrange. Because I'll search for this, I won't be able to find it. Point. Save. Okay, I think it's I think it's done. There could be an error. You never know. That's what makes it exciting. Um, I'm not sure why it, it always says it saves first. It takes so long to save. I'm just going to run it because I'm, I'm impatient. Oh, it worked. And I was right. Okay, you'll notice here that my my points, my there's, there's some bumpiness in the curve here. So let's go back over here and make that smaller. Let's make that 1E7. And there you go. Uh, I should go up here, let's do this. Graph uh, width equals 500, height equals uh, 350, because otherwise then we don't have to scroll so much. And there you go. So now one thing I can do here is to just kind of, uh, you know, pinpoint exact. I got that exactly right. That's really weird. Um, if you want, there's one thing that we can do to kind of make this even better. Uh, I can go over here and say, in my graph option, I can say fast equals false, and then run it. And this will use Plotly to plot it. And the nice thing about Plotly is that I can actually uh, zoom in. I can zoom in again. And you get a better value, right? And, and then I can see, actually, you can see that I get uh, 1.5 times 10 to the ninth, and then the next data points somewhere over here. Yeah, so I, I skip it. Uh, and, and I could zoom in and get an even better value for that. Uh, but I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so that's the location of, of the Lagrange point. And what's great about this is that I can change the masses and the locations. I could do two binary stars. It doesn't matter, right? I may have to change my initial H value and how far I plot H, but that's just, you can guess around with that. It's not a big deal. Okay, now let's see if I can just change this, this curve and find L1. So L1, if I go back to my equation, uh, I'll just put this as, um, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 uh, so that they're positive values. Uh, so this would be, the left-hand side would be this, but this would be minus. And then this would be minus. And then the right-hand side would be just minus right here. And let's run it to see what happens. 
And notice, I, I am going H, I'm starting with H and I'm moving H, so I'm actually moving closer to, no, H is a distance from, so I'm moving further away from, further away from the, the thing. So, but I get the same value. I think that, I think that's right. I think L1 and L2 are close to being the same value away, um, 1.59. Yeah. But the curve looks different too, so. So I, I, I think there could be an error here. I'm, I'm, I feel a little uncomfortable that I got exactly what I expected. Um, let's just, let's just, I mean, we could just try changing the mass of the sun, right? Let, well, how about this? If I change the mass of the earth, then the Lagrange point should be closer to the earth. No, they should be further from the earth, right? Cause you could be further away and still get a gravitational force that pull it in. So let's do that. Let's change this to, um, uh, let's change this to nine times 10 to the ninth. And let's just see if I get a different value. Okay, so I do, it's further away. That's what I said. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy. Uh, I think it's all working. So I'll give you this code uh, and you can play with it as you like. But there we calculated the Lagrange points. Now, there's some other things to look at. And number one, uh, we need to look at uh, the other Lagrange points, four and five, I think are kind of complicated. Number two, if you look at the next generation space telescope, it's gonna be at Lagrange point L2, but it's gonna orbit around it. And, and that point is actually not stable. So uh, it's kind of weird. I haven't figured that out yet. When I do, I'll make a video of it. But there you go. That's Lagrange points L1 and L2.